Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast which is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this broadcast, you may pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions. We'd like to listen to your comments as well. I'd like to mention that beginning next week, real quickly, the Goose Street Church of Christ, 4211 North Main, beginning July 7th running through the 11th, through the 12th of uh, next week. Uh, we'll have our Vacation Bible School. So we ask 7 p.m. each night, ask you to bring uh, your Bibles with you, bring friends, family members, and anyone who has an interest in studying the uh, Word of God together with us July 7th uh, through the 12th. Uh, that begins next Sunday at 7 p.m. each night. Amen. Uh, that being said, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans, the first chapter. I'm going to read verse 26 through verse number 32. Uh, and we're going to deal with the subject, Are You Worthy of Death? Are You Worthy of Death? And now once I read these passages of scriptures, I will toss it to Brother uh, Javier Frias, and he will uh, be elaborating on the foundation uh, for this subject of Are You Worthy of Death? In Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse number 26, the Bible says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things, here's our subject, are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Our subject matter will be coming from that, uh, verse 32, such things are worthy of death. At this time, Brother Javier Frias. God bless you, Brother Henry. You know, some of the scriptures that you read, even in verse 26, uh, that God gave them up uh, unto vile affections, uh, that women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burn in their lusts, one to another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. And, you know, as we enter this uh, radio broadcast, we looked up at the screen, and as they're closing... Uh, the Pride Month uh, for the homosexuals, a month that the world has made to celebrate uh, men with men and women with women. Uh, the scriptures uh, speak in this chapter against that. This is something that is worthy of death. And t today's title, Are You Worthy of Death? If you do these things, audience, it is worthy of death. God never des designed man to be with man. Even for those who are not homosexual, the scriptures mention here that because you don't retain God in your knowledge, God will give you over to fornication, even if you're a woman with a man. You know, if you go to the club and you lay with them afterward, that is worthy of death. The scriptures talks about uh, unrighteousness, covetousness, deceit, malignity, backbiters, haters of God, proud. Even pride is worthy of death. In verse 32, it mentions that those that do such things... They are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them to do them. So let's say you don't do any of these things. You're not boasters. You're not inventor of evil things. You're not disobedient to parents. You're not a covenant breaker. But the idea is that you have pleasure in them that do them. If you even have pleasure in the things that these sinners do, if you agree with it, if you like it, but you wouldn't dare do it. Uh, you like that people murder, but you wouldn't dare do it. You like that people dance lasciviously, but you wouldn't do it however you like to see it or you agree with it in your imagination. 
you're still worthy of death, even though you uh, don't do it. And so we give this warning because many of you may think I'm a good person. Uh, I've done good. I've given a person a dollar at the stoplight. I've uh, given to the community. I don't curse out my parents. I don't steal. However, the idea is that the sins that you have on you have not been removed from you in the body of Christ, the, the body that Jesus died for, according to the scriptures in Acts 20, where he purchased the church with his own blood. Understand that Jesus did not purchase all the churches with his own blood because they have conflicting doctrines. Jesus never planned to create conflicting teachings, conflicting congregations that disagree. Remember, the scriptures teach us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are all one. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, they don't disagree on doctrine. They are in one agreement. Amen. And the Bible says in Ephesians that he is the Savior of the body. That word body is not dealing with individual body. He's dealing with the body of Christ or the church that he purchased. And there's mention that there's one. And we are given this information because even in the church, if you agree to these things, you are worthy of death. If you agree to these sins, you are worthy of death. The Bible says that Jesus will send out his angels to the four winds of the earth, and they will cast out or pluck out of his kingdom all things that offend. In, in, in other words, the church that Jesus built, because even in Revelation it mentions that Satan has a seat in the church, and he knows where Satan's seat is. And that those are the ones that the angels will pluck out from his kingdom, meaning even though they're in the number, they're living two lives and they will not make heaven uh, their home. And so we give this warning, audience, because you have to believe that Christ is the Son of God. He came, he died for your sins on the cross, he resurrected according to the scriptures, and let it be known that his plan was never to make different doctrines, different churches. He planned to make one church. That was his plan. However, the devil had other plans and made different kinds in order to confuse the world, and which he did do. He confused the world by creating different ones. And we're trying to expose that and enlighten you that there is but one in the scriptures in order for you to come out from among them and be saved. And understand that your sins could be washed away if you believe that there's one, as just like there's one Christ, there's one body. And you have to repent of your sins and denominationalism. It doesn't matter if your father, your mother, or a part of a denomination. My mother was a Catholic. However, just because she was a Catholic and I was raised by her as in the Catholic faith, I did not agree to her, what she was teaching or to how I was brought up just because she was my mother. I went against her and obeyed the truth and got baptized into the body of Christ because you have to love Christ and God more than men. Amen. You have to love Christ and God more than men in order to be saved. And thank God that through prayer and through study, she also came out from the Catholic faith Amen. Uh, as well. Praise now, God. when we look at a few scriptures here in uh, Matthew chapter 7, this is for inside the body of Christ. Matthew 7, looking at 21, it says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Look what Jesus will say. And then will I profess unto you, unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So even though these individuals in the church were prophesying and casting out devils, they were doing other sins as well that they should have repented of. That's worthy of death. The Corinthian Church of Christ they had individuals that were prophesying. But if you look at the whole book of Corinthia, the Corinth Church of Christ, you can see chapter after chapter a different type of sin committed by that congregation, by that Church of Christ. And even though they had prophets prophesying, Paul went to them so they could repent of those sins. And so in the church it's needful to repent, and outside the body you have to repent and put on Christ to even begin to carry your cross, I want to end with this, Matthew chapter 10. The scripture is verse 34. Jesus said, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. 
He that loveth father or, or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So if you love your son or your daughter, if you're letting them go to the clubs, you're not worthy of Christ. If you're not condemning the sin that they're doing, or even if you love your mother or your father more than Christ and don't tell them the truth, Jesus said you're not worthy uh, of me. You're worthy of death. You're worthy of the lake of fire. That is your worth. That is your worth. You may have a worth of millions or billions or thousands in your bank account, but we know the rich man in Luke 16, Jesus said what he was worth, and he cast him into hell because of his sins. And so you may have a, a certain worth in the eyesights of the political world, in your community, in your family, uh, even before a denomination, a congregation that you seem or think is a congregation that Jesus built. However, that congregation is worth nothing if it's, if it's not the bride of Christ. Revela Revelation talks about that. He said, I will show you the, the bride, the lamb's wife. We have to identify who that is because if you can't identify who that is, then you're not worthy of life. You're worthy of death. And she has a certain specific image. That she of how she looks like, and not all of them are the bride of Christ. You cannot say that because there are different characteristics of doctrine and heresy in each individual one. Verse thirty-eight: And he that taketh not his, his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You have to lose that old life, denominationalism, of loving your father, your mother more than Christ. And take heed to yourselves, because Christ will one day return, and we do not know the day and the hour which he will return, because he will come as a thief in the night to those who are not ready. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Brother Javier, wonderful explanation, laying the foundation Man. for our subject. Trader listeners, I want you to understand something. This is not a, a radio program, or it's not a segment to beat up the lesbians, the gays, and the queers. Man. What we do on this program is we speak against sin and any, anything that opposes itself against the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You know, Brother Ozan did a wonderful job this morning, and Javier yeah. puts it on YouTube, in preaching on the subject of why it's so hard to get married versus just living together. I'm going to encourage you all who are followers, and if you're listening here for the first time today, go to YouTube and pull that video up yeah. and uh, listen to it with honest hearts, honest ears. Why is it so hard to get married versus just living together? And the brother did a wonderful job in speaking the oracles of God, and I hope and pray that those of you who are finding yourselves in situations where you're shacking up, chambering, and wanting us, yes. living lascivious lives, that that message from the Bible, the Word of God, will cause you to repent. Now, that being said, we need to understand yeah. something. This nation is out of control in many areas in more ways than one. Uh, and we expect that from the world, and it shouldn't surprise those of us who are in the faith because Jesus has already said before his return that it was going to wax worse and worse and people are going to be out of control. But it just baffles me uh, how this country, when we swear in a president, that he or she, he wants to lay his hand on the Bible uh, as a form of swearing himself in, but yet he doesn't listen to the oracles or the words that God has to say on the pages. The Bible itself, the book, the pages, you gotta understand some are not holy. It's the words that God said on the pages that are holy. Amen. That's what God has said on the pages is holy. The book itself is not holy. Some of you go crazy and haywire if you see a Bible thrown on the floor, a Bible ripped the paper pieces in some area. You know, Bibles get tore up and burned all, all the time. You know, hotel fires. And in all kind of ways, the Bible can be destroyed. But yet, what God has said will never be destroyed. His word will stand forever. His word will forever stand true. And our nation is, and before I toss it, is, is exactly uh, 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 an example of what uh, Solomon talks about here in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. I want, you, I want you to see this. He says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The same book that we swear in on, presidents swear on it, people swear in on in court, you know, make files before God, are the same, 
words that people are not even taking heed to. You have a, a, lay, a, a lesbian and gay and bi and queer month and you call it gay pride and you take the rainbow uh, uh, colors which uh, God made a covenant with Noah with and you made it this gay pride symbol and you walk around with pride in your heart because you are doing things that God has turned you over to a reprobate mind to allow you to do. See, the numbers 281-837-2222, I, I want to encourage anyone out there who is practicing that sin to call in and show us where God ever changed his mind about uh, that activity of sin if it's not repented of that you're not worthy of death. You're going to die, my friend. If you continue to practice that sin as 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 you would uh, practicing a uh, murder, as you would uh, practice even the fornicator, I want you to know something too. You're in the same classification. Amen. So again, we're not just beating up on the lesbian, bi, queer. They need Jesus, and they can change, and God can help them. But you, as who are fornicating and shacking up, you'll you'll fall into the same condemnation. Now, in Leviticus chapter twenty and verse thirteen, God still feels the same way He felt about uh, this lesbian and man wanting to be with man today as he felt back then. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, Leviticus 20, 13, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If that wasn't enough, you just simply turn over to Leviticus chapter 18. And you, you would look at verse number number 22 in the book of Leviticus in the law, in the law of Moses. Again, he says the same exact thing about this, uh, this particular act. Thou shalt not lay with mankind as with womankind. He says it is an abomination. And so God has always despised, God has always hated uh, this activity of sin that is so uh, propagated and flaunted today in our society by parades in various uh, cities and, and countries. You need to understand you're going to die one day, my friend, and you're going to give an account of this sin that you're practicing on the day of judgment. And some will say, well, you guys don't have a heaven or hell to put. No, but what we do is God does. And what we do is we speak the oracles of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I want you to turn there. Listen what the Bible says. We don't have a heaven, but God has already said where people who practice that sin, those sins, where they will end up. And let me say something. We had those in Corinth who were practicing those things. But they repented. They changed. Paul was able to share the gospel with them. They realized what they were doing that they were, was wrong. And guess what they did? They got baptized. Their sins were washed away. And they were added to the church. That, that Javier just talked about. The one church. The people of God that you read about in the Bible. And my friend, the same thing can happen to you. We're not saying this because we hate you. We're trying to fight for your soul. We're trying to get you to see truth. We want you to go to heaven because God sent his son for you to go to heaven. Mm. Don't let the world tell you you were born that way. You're not born that way if God made you that way and then because he made you that way, then he's going to throw you in hell. See how ridiculous that is? Being born a lesbian, that, that's ridiculous. That's not like you say, well, I was born black. I was born white. That's, that's, too, that's why it's not a sin to be black, Israelite, United Christ. It's not a sin to be white, United Israel and Christ, whatever you call yourself, practical knowledge. You, it, it's not a sin. To be born, you had no choice of your race. But you have a choice of whether you sin or not sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, let me read this. Brother Javier has got something he want to add. Real quick, Brother Javier, I want to look at verse number 9. Look what, what Paul said. Now, God has a heaven and hell to put us in. He said, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Don't let Satan deceive you. Neither fornicators. He knows who you shacking up. Again, you got to listen to Brother Ozan's uh, message this morning. You got to go back and listen to it, fornicators, in and out of the church. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, get this, shall inherit the kingdom of God. But what happened to them? Look what happened to them. And, and such were. Y'all see that? So they had them there. They had fornicators in the church. They had adultery, effeminate, men wanting to act like women, women who wants to act like men. They had abusers of themselves with mankind. Such were some of them. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Let me tell you, the only way you will get help, my, my friend, uh, if you're a, a lesbian, if you're a 
if you're a, 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 a if you're gay, if if you're a bi, whatever you call yourself, you won't get the help in the Baptist church. No, no, they'll talk about you. It may be that you won't get it in the Catholic church. Matter of fact, they need Jesus. Too many of those false priests, and if people understand their Bible, I, you understand why I call them false priests. That's why they're pedophiles. That's why they're molesting children. Uh, that's why they're molesting young boys in these so-called Catholic schools. I want you to understand something. Those religions are not of Christ. You don't find Catholic and Baptist in the Bible. You don't find those organizations in the Bible. If you want the help for your soul, you want to be rescued from your sin, you want to be not worthy of death, then you need to come to the church where God's spirit is, and that is the church of Christ for your help. All they do for you in the Baptist church is they put you on the drums. They put you on the piano. Most of you know that. Well, the one that played, oh, he gay. Oh, yeah, Brad put him right there. And most of you, you already know it. And for the most part, many of them, at least the ones I come in contact with, many of them, it's Rev who's messing with them. And Rev may have some sugar in his tank himself. You know why? Because Rev doesn't have the spirit of Christ either. And I use that word loosely because he shouldn't be called Rev. But he doesn't have the spirit of God. So you walk around, you do is talk about him. You let him play the drums and the piano. But you can never deal with their spiritual sickness. And that is bringing them to Jesus so that they can get help. All you can do is talk about them and use them and misuse them and abuse them like they do in the Catholic Church. So we're pleading and reaching for your soul. And we mentioned before, we don't profit anything from you all by saying what we're saying. We're not trying to be popular. Uh, we're not asking you for no money at all. All we're asking you to do is open up your Bible with honesty and sincere hearts and get your soul right before you die so that you don't be worthy of the second death. And that is cast into hell into an eternal fire where you will never, you'll be as far away from the presence of God and you will never be rescued. 281-837-2222. Brother Javier, you had something Just you want to Just a quick question. You know, yes, some people say it's 2019 so we can have women with women, men with men. All this, they'll say... It doesn't matter what church you go to, it's 2019. What does the Bible say? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the key. Does the Bible say that? And that's, and that's the problem. People think that culture dictates God's word. Culture does not dictate what God has said. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 14, and I'm going to toss it to Brother uh, Ozan just real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, this is the same letter we just read, uh, Paul writing to the saints in Corinth. He had to deal with the various issues and problems that this congregation was having. Even when you talk about women preachers, you know. No, there's no authority in the church of Christ for women to be preached. There's no such thing in the church of Christ as a woman shepherd, a woman e a elder. You don't find that in the Bible. You find it in denominational churches. Pastor uh, so-and-so who's a female. That, 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 that's foolishness. But it's not in the Bible. And so culture never dictates what's sin and what's not sin. God does. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, even when he was talking about uh, the order of the church and the function of verse 33, he says, For God is not the author of confusion. You know, if you're a man with a man, that's confusion. The Bible calls that confusion. If you're a woman with a, a woman, that's confusion. And people are thoroughly confused. If you think it's all right for a man to be a man. But it says God's not the author of confusion, uh, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. And if they will learn anything, let a master husband home, for it's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What, came the word of God from you, or came it unto you only? Now, you know, there are people who will lie and say Paul, or was the law Paul, he was a male chauvinist. Uh, that was just that culture that day. Men hated women that day. That Paul was just talking to them back then. Well, let's see if that was just culture. Let's see if what Paul just told them about women being silent, that was just for them back then. Remember, he said, in all the churches. So I want you to make sure you, all the churches of the saints. Now, notice what he said, all the churches of the saints. God is not the altar of confusion. So look at verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge, look what Paul said, let's see if it's culture, that the things that are right unto you, what are they, Paul? The commandments of the Lord. Amen. But if any man be ignorant, he says, let him be ignorant. That's just, that's just what it boils down to. And so it had nothing to do with culture. People can say whatever they want to say. That was for back then. I can love who I want to love. Well, in a sense, that's true. You can go to hell if you want to go to hell. God loves you enough, he'll let you go to hell if you want to go. But I don't think you really understand the ramifications of what you're saying. My friend, you don't want to end up in a devil's hell. And if you don't get it right for you close your eyes on this side of heaven, I'm here to tell you, based on the word of God, you will be just like Esau. You'll cry, you'll beg, 
your plea to have a, another chance at a birthright, at a spiritual birth, and you will receive none of it, my friend. So get it right now while you have a chance. 281-837-2222. Brother Ozan. Yeah, Henry, God excellent job. Oh, yeah, God Thank bless you. you both. What an excellent job. You know, I just want to say a couple of things on this. Uh, count it worthy. Uh, we also have to understand the nation of Rome. We know that from the Gospels that uh, the blood, according to the book of Luke, chapter uh, 13, the blood of some people were mingled with the sacrifices mm -hmm. of the Romans. This is a nation that was ungodly. The Roman nation did not walk upright morally, much like our America. So these brothers have given us excellent scriptures to validate that has nothing to do with culture. And I want to chime in on this is a letter to the Romans who, as Daniel described them, of all the four kingdoms, this particular group, Rome, was different. They were vicious. They did not regard the human life as the previous three kingdoms. Although those previous three kingdoms took life, this Roman kingdom had no regard for it. And I want to share with you something here. I want you to look... This is not the description Brother Freas read, Romans chapter 1. So you're looking at a nation that promotes immorality. So if there's any nation that's going to okay men with men and women with women, it will be much like our America. If you look at America, much of our government, our system, our some of our bloodthirsty sports, but I'm not knocking, I'm just saying we have a liking unto Rome. So don't pull the culture card because look what Brother Frias read in Romans chapter number one. He said in verse 25, who changed, watch this audience, we beg you to listen, truth of God into a lie. Did you see that? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You know who one of the creatures are? You and I. They serve the teachers, the reverends, the doctors, both in and out of the church of Christ, who are icons to them. Imagery of the true God, but having a form of God, but denying the power thereof. Look at verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up until, look at what this affection is called between a woman and a woman. Vile affections. For even their women did change the, watch this key word, natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving, look at this, the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. This isn't right. It isn't acceptable. And receiving in themselves the recompense of the heir which was meet or acceptable. Now, I want to shout out the because our time is almost up. Audience, you've got to understand this point. You say the fornicator and the adulterer, they are sinners too. And we tell you, as Henry read, that's right. But one thing you don't understand is when we see a young man and a woman or an old man and an older woman or vice versa, the age groups, hugging and kissing, we don't look at that. We don't go up there and say, hey, are you guys married? We don't go, have you put a ring on that? Is that yours to have? Because that is natural. And we're reaching out with our heart to the gay community. You don't understand the God that made you. Man. That's natural. We have to hear that's not his wife. That's his sister or something crazy like that. But when we see a man with a man or a woman with a woman, the nature of the creation of God says that's wrong when you look at it because that can't happen. When we see an individual who is a male masculine with a female's clothing on, we go, that is an abomination because that's not Amen. what he should be wearing. And that's why you're getting the grief that you're getting. It isn't, we are afraid, we're not homophobic. I'm not afraid of being a homosexual. I'm afraid for your soul. 
because I know that God is not going to accept it, and he's made it so blatant that even the world who is in sin won't accept it on the regular basis. Now we leave those who are members of the Church of Christ in Romans 16, 16, the Church of Christ salute you. You know, and you know what's sad about this is that they're not understanding what the word natural is dealing with. And see, this is what's troubling my spirit. That in Romans 1, this word is G5446. G5446. And I love this meaning. Uh, full sequels. Physical, that is by implication. Watch this. Instinctive. See, the instincts of a male is to be drawn to a woman. So you're going against the instinct. And that says you're fighting your spirit. See, it is the spirit in you that makes you do that. The spirit in an animal, the dog, causes them to be drawn to the other dogs. He isn't drawn to lions, knowing he could be their lunch. But the idea is he's drawn to the It's his instinct. Sometimes you'll see them turn around three times. Scientists maybe can't explain all. Their instincts in them. They're instinctive to know if the, one of the puppies is sick. To eat and destroy that puppy before he poisons the rest of the group. And so the woman's instinct is to be drawn to the man. And when you all have children in your families, and our hearts go out to you because, as Henry said, the denomination, as Javier pointed out, these false churches cannot help you. But if you would come to the Church of Christ, you don't have to come where we're at, but come to the Church of Christ and study and understand what we're saying. The instincts of a woman is to be drawn to the man. And when your daughter says, I'm confused sexual identity, you have to let them talk and hear their thoughts. And then you have to let them know, baby, you can look in the mirror on you and see your nature, your design shows your instincts should be towards a male. Amen. What's making you think that's wrong? Either she's created her own heart as Jeroboam or someone's helped her think that or someone's touched her. Right. Either three will work. But you have to help understand just because they touch you, you don't have to change your identity. Sexually. Just because your friend wants to be that means that doesn't make you wrong for wanting a boy. Right. And that's going to start at a young age. And right. we have to understand is that they're going to look at a little boy. No sense in going you little fast girl and hitting them, that is their nature to see. I like that little boy. Yeah. And we got that thing wrong. And so when the yeah. individual just says, well, I just feel in my self that I should, and I'm drawn to women and I should be, you should have to explain to them why. Because you have emotions. Those are from the devil to confuse you. You don't have an emotion to eat wood. You don't have because you eat food, you see. So you have to help them understand. Right. You know, say, why don't you have that emotion? Right. Because you haven't found pleasure in it. Yeah. You found pleasure in it because Satan wants you to go against God. And you don't find that in the denomination no, they because no they're way. confused on even Amen. how to worship God. Amen. But we're encouraging you, if you come to the Lord's church, yes. the church of Christ that walk right, you're going with your Bible and you see what they're doing, you have a right to get free counseling. Amen. I guarantee Amen. you, Henry, I'll be here, myself and others that are like free me, sure. Brother Rob Polk, there are many Evangelists right. all over the world, Brother James Brooks in California. Many in that were, yeah, Brother Green in Chicago. There, yeah. there, there are many, and women, godly women, that speak up for the Lord. They will show you by the scriptures that the devil is trying to cause you. And this is what he's getting you all. I want you to hear me well, audience, especially the gay community. Let's be real. We love you. And we're the only group that truly loves you because we will tell you the truth. No. But you have an anger at God. That's what Romans 1 pointed out. Amen. You haven't received him as God. Mm -hmm. And you need to come and tell us why. Amen. Sometimes as you're saying, why is he letting children die in other nations? Right. Why did he let cancer take my grandmother? Mm -hmm. Why did he let me get cancer? Right. I've done nothing but live right. And then you've turned to this lifestyle because of your anger right. or your confusion. Your father died when you were five. And all you remember is the wheels from the or uh, hurts as they drove off with right. his body, and you're angry. But if you come to the Lord's church, 
We have the comfort of God in 2 Corinthians 1 that we will tell you why these things are that way. And you will leave that. You don't have to believe us, but you will leave with the truth. And we Amen. mean that with all our heart. Amen. And no, we're not going to laugh at you and make fun of you. You come in there with a dress Amen. on. Your man, we're still going to sit you Amen. down with ultimate respect and talk to you. But you know when you first made that action, you felt odd about it yourself. Right. Be real. Yeah. When the first time you thought of it or someone touched you or someone taught you about it, you asked yourself, why did you feel awkward? Your society has failed you. Your churches have failed you. Israel United in Christ has failed you. Yes. The Muslim community has failed you. The Buddhist community has failed you. And the Hindus and the list is endless because they do not have the spirit of Christ. That's right. They will not love you and tell you why you have chosen that road. And they won't label with you and serve you because they're afraid of being around you because you're wearing a dress. But we're not like Amen. that, the Amen. saints of God. Amen. We know that we love you. You're made by God as we, but you're going in a different direction. So we leave with that. We hope this can help you. Hey, hey Stephen, I wanted to give you a thought. Here's a thought. Um, yeah, what you, just piggyback on what you just said earlier. Uh, what goes against nature, you know, if you have a man being instinctively attracted to another man, that goes against nature. Yes. Because a man and a woman, they're, they're, they're designed differently. A yes. man is designed differently from a woman. So there's, there's, it can't be an attraction towards the same sex because their, their, their bodies are not designed to be attracted to the same sex. Exactly. It's designed to be attracted to the opposite sex. Exactly. A man is instinctively attracted to a female, mm -hmm. just as a female is instinctively attracted to a male. That's right. So according to Romans 126, mm -hmm. that goes against nature. Mm -hmm. And when God sees that there's no change, mm -hmm. He's going to turn you over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. Amen. Because Good he feels point. that that's what you deserve because say, you want to live your life like that and you don't want to come to me, repent right. and change, then, then you stay in that state of mind because you enjoy the pleasure of being in that state of mind of living in sin. Mm -hmm. That's and right. not willing to want to change. See, God knows if your heart has desire to want to change because he knows what's in your heart. That's right. And whatever's in your heart is going to, be, it's going to reflect was going to be seeing your actions. Exactly. So if right. you have that desire to want to change, nobody knows that but God Himself. Amen. No That's man right. can see what's in your heart because man did not create another man. That's God right. created all of us as human beings. Mm -hmm. So if anybody would know what's in our heart, surely it's God because God made us. That's he right. He right. expects us to be created in the, in His image. That's right. That's how we are made in His image. Mm -hmm. And so, I just want to share that. Man, God bless you, brother. Well said, exactly. No one knows the heart of God. God bless you.